Welcome back to another video brought to you by Robolabs, FloatingCottonCandy.com, and CaramelPopcornEquipment.com. We're revisiting the Robolabs RoboSugar 10, which is an automatic machine for making caramel popcorn. And on the first video, I indicated that there were a couple extra things you could do with the machine, and this is a video where I'm going to show you just that. Uh, it is essentially a machine intended only for making caramel popcorn, but once you've made an investment in equipment, it's always nice when you can find some extra tips and tricks. In this case, it's kind of like an Easter egg where you've got a, a found feature to extend the usefulness of the investment, and that is making savory popcorns using it effectively as a mixer, which I want to stress again is not at all what it's intended to be, but uh, having discovered how to use it for that, it's actually very, very handy. So in this case, the 10-gallon machine for caramelizing popcorn becomes a 10-gallon savory corn mixer. If you uh, look for the Robo Sugar 20, which is a 20-gallon caramelizer, you can effectively do the same thing with that machine and turning it into a 20-gallon uh, mixer for making savory corns. And uh, again, savory meaning essentially not sweet corns, or at least not sweet to a high temperature where you are caramelizing the sugar. So while well, you can make sugar and essentially make sort of a kettle corn or cinnamon and sugar and make a churro mix, uh, usually when I say savory, I'm talking about your cheese, your cheddar cheese, your bacon cheddar, your Parmesan garlic, your chives onion, your buffalo, all of your various hot mixes. I mean, there's, there's really no limit to the spices that you can add. But uh, I'll just use the word savory from here on out to indicate that we're talking about mixes where you're not cooking them to temperature, you're just adding oil and spices of your own desire or purchasing pre-mixed spices so that you are creating savory flavors rather than typically sweet flavors and certainly not heating or caramelizing sugar at this point. We're going to essentially use it as a mixer to make 10 gallons at a time. Very simple process. Um, just a couple things we want to do with the machine, they're a little different. Taking it uh, essentially out of automatic mode and uh, manually controlling the machine just a little bit so that it doesn't go through its typical 20, 25 minute process of, of heating, mixing, and then cooling because we don't really need to heat and we don't really need to cool. We just want to use it as a mixer and bypass the more advanced features. So uh, if you haven't watched the previous video on how it works as a caramelizer, please do so then my bypasses into manual mode will make more sense. But again, we've got a kettle, we've got a popcorn hopper. Um, in this case, I'm going to stop the video, grab my materials, um, and show you what the sort of, we'll call them hacks um, or shortcuts for lack of a better term, how to very quickly just make 10 gallons of any type of a savory flavor that, uh, that you desire. All right, for starters, I've zoomed in just a little bit so that you can see the process of adding ingredients. It's not very uh, exciting, certainly not very difficult, but um, just to give you a little bit of a close-up and then I'll go to more of a handheld mode. Um, but for, um, for making the gourmet uh, popcorn in a savory mix, um, you're basically just gonna take whatever oil and ingredients you uh, decide to use. Again, whether it's just pre-purchased ingredients or if you're going to mix your own and make your own recipes, uh, pour them into the kettle. Nothing too complicated there. My tips, however, are that you do not want to uh, superheat the kettle, but you don't want it stone cold either. Room temperature might make your oil a little too thick to spread evenly. So when I turn the machine on, rather than letting it ramp all the way up to, uh, you know, uh, 165 to 180 degrees Celsius, really don't want it to get more than 30, 35 degrees Celsius, just enough to keep the oil flowing smoothly. That'll happen very, very quickly. Um, we're not talking uh, much, much temperature at all, a matter of uh, 10, 15, 30 seconds, maybe tops, depending on what your ambient room temperature is. Uh, at that point, it's, we're going to force the machine to dump the uh, popcorn, or we can just take the bucket out and dump it manually, which is what I usually do, and, and I'll do that in this case. So while the machine is designed to dump popcorn um, for making the savories. I prefer to dump it manually, easier for me to control. Uh, but there are three buttons where I can force it to go into mixing mode as opposed to heating mode. Uh, you probably can't see it on screen right now, but I push the button, you can see it's attempting to do a dump. I want it to mix a little evenly for a couple seconds before I do my manual dump. And, uh, and that's that. We just dump the popcorn. Where the caramelized video, I told you I don't typically fill the bucket up all the way because um, the sticky caramel will sometimes make the popcorn rise over the top. If you really go for a full 10 gallons and you'll have spillage um, with the gourmet popcorns or the savory popcorns, 
uh, since you don't have a thick, heavy caramel uh, causing the popcorn to stick. I will fill this bucket and use a full 10 gallons. You can uh, see that uh, you don't really get any spillage from this. So I can make more of the savory mixes than I can of the sticky caramels. Uh, so that's a nice little benefit as well. Now as it mixes, I'm going to go ahead and stop the process because I want to take the camera off the tripod and uh, show you what the mix looks like. And I'll probably edit some of this out because this is going to be a little bit of a, a jerky motion as I do it. But I'm going to lift the camera off, bring it over because I want you to see this mix. Now I'll have to restart the machine in order to force it to go back into mixing mode. So when I turn the machine back on, it's going to go into heat mode and then I'm going to force it back into mix mode. And uh, 90 seconds is the standard mix time. You can uh, set this machine to mix longer than 90 seconds. The reality is 60 seconds is about all you're going to need to fully get this mix. And I chose a, a bacon cheese here to get a darker mix just so that you can see it happen. Now what's different here than making a caramel corn is not only don't I want typically the mix to dump automatically, but I also do not want it to uh, dump onto this cooling mechanism automatically either. Uh, and, and let me be careful I say this. We can let the kettle dump, but we don't need this cooling mechanism to cool the popcorn because we didn't really heat the popcorn. It's essentially pretty close to room temperature. So, so I've shown you how the mixing works. That it takes essentially 60 seconds for the, uh, for the mix to work. And I, I worked with that dark bacon cheddar just so you could see how quickly it does mix up. Um, and while again, I could let the automatic popcorn dump into the mixer, uh, I choose not to with the savories because I want the paddles to stir up and evenly distribute that thin layer of oil beforehand uh, and then manually dump. I could also let the kettle automatically dump onto the cooling mechanism, but that's not really uh, productive or necessary for two reasons. One, we don't need a five minute cooling cycle. We don't need a one minute cooling cycle. We don't need any cooling cycle at all because the popcorn hasn't been heated. There, there's nothing to cool down. So uh, kind of a waste of effort to do that. But more importantly, um, the oily, heavily seasoned salts and Parmesans and chives and buffalo ranches and all those seasonings, um, they're just gonna get my mesh belt essentially dirty requiring more cleaning. I don't want the savory cheeses mixing with the buffalo ranches then mixing with the fruit flavors, uh, not even a little bit. And I don't want to have to clean that cooling belt any more than necessary. And since this doesn't need to be cooled, um, there's really no reason to have it touch the belt. So what I do instead, I cut out, and this may not fit on screen, but I cut out um, pieces of plastic or various materials uh, that I use essentially to dump onto and transport into the, uh, the actual dispensary uh, instead of using the, the cooling tray whatsoever. Uh, so there's a couple of benefits here. One, I keep my tray clean. And two, um, when you're making caramelized popcorns, you're typically using mushroom corn, which has a rounded profile and doesn't break much during the cooling process. Uh, however, generally when you're serving your savory flavors, you're using what people are used to getting in movie theaters. Uh, it's called butterfly popcorn. It's got the little wings. It's got a better mouthfeel. Uh, and therefore, uh, the taste profile is better for these types of savory flavorings. Uh, but it also breaks a lot easier. So if you run it on that cooling tray at all, you're going to get a lot more scrap pieces. Uh, so therefore, it's waste. The product that's left over uh, tends to be broken up more. And again, more cleaning. And all for no reason, because we don't need to cool it. So uh, I've used a lot of different materials. This is actually um, a 100% uh, plastic. Uh, it's actually like a cardboard. It's a sign board. Um, uh, people use it for yard, the same material used for yard signs. So you can get this at sign shops, um, things of that nature. And I cut it to the right size. And what I actually do is I set it down over the cooling tray. Uh, and then I put a, a little bend in it. So it's got a little handle where you can cut a little thumb hole. And I use that just to lift it up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the machine back up and, and just pretend that I wasn't making a video here <laughs> so that uh, it seems a little more smooth. Now making the video takes a long time, but actually making the corn is simple, right? Um, I let it mix for 90 seconds. When it looks about right, I, uh, I stop it and then I just turn it off and I just dump. So I usually have to give it a dump, lift, it just slides down into that bin at the end. A second dump with a little shake, then uh, just lift it up, and it just operates essentially as a slide. 
then uh, you know, occasionally I wipe it with a rag so the stays clean. But because it's a nice, smooth, plasticized finish, um, the corner doesn't stick to it. And this is going to be a little jumpy as I take uh, take the camera back off the tripod. But I want to make sure that you see that that what comes out at the end is my finished product, and it ends up in this bin just as it would if it were caramel corn. But in this case, we've got a nice bacon cheddar. We pull it out. There's the material, nicely mixed. And again, using that little shortcut hack, whatever you want to call it, of putting the uh, plastic cardboard over the, uh, the actual cooling belt. Uh, my belt is perfectly clean. I don't have any scrap. And the nice thing is the butterfly popcorn is uh, it's all nice and whole. It hasn't been destroyed by the belt or the cooling process. Nothing got broke. And the mixer does a pretty good job. I mean, you get a few pieces of breakage when you're mixing, but uh, the way this mixing mechanism works is, is actually pretty gentle for the product itself. So uh, I'll cut this off and put it back on the tripod and wrap up. Okay, well, I'm back and I decided one thing I should probably do is bag up um, some of this bacon cheese I just made. Uh, to give you an idea of how much 10 gallons is, because that's not a frame of reference most people think about. So I use uh, uh, pretty large gusseted bags that fill them right to the top. Uh, 10 gallons will essentially make seven of these, uh, half that size, 14 obviously, those are the two sizes that I offer. Uh, this is by weight, it's about eight ounces. Uh, so seven of these per batch. If you have the 20 gallon uh, machine, obviously double that, you'd be making 14 of these per batch. Uh, the weight will change depending on the seasoning mix you use, wet cheese versus dry cheese, uh, certain seasonings and spices weigh more or less than the others, but uh, essentially a 90 second mix time or less um, to make it, because while it takes a while to make the video and explain the process and a couple of the shortcuts, the reality is all you do is fill the 10 gallon bucket full of uh, popcorn, dump in your oil and mix uh, together, which I simply warm up on a heating plate. Some people use a microwave, or you can buy them already pre-mixed, and uh, dump the popcorn, let it mix. As they say, stop the machine, keep it from going through its normal cooling cycle, and instead, um, my suggestion, not a requirement, but you save a lot of time in cleaning and a lot of corn breakage, get a piece of fiberglass or plastic board or, you know, any material that you're comfortable with using and uh, put it over your cooling tray so that you can uh, move the material right into the bucket or the uh, food transport bin and uh, that way there's zero cleanup. Still put some hot water into the kettle at the end of the day and give it a quick boil for that cleaning, but uh, when I'm making savory, that's uh, nothing else really needs to be cleaned. So again, the RS-10 and the uh, RoboSugar RS-20 uh, designed really for caramelizing, but once you made the investment, you might as well get something else out of it, and the ability to make 10, 20 different stock flavors for savory uh, certainly extends the value of the machine. It's like getting two machines in one, and um, they're worth it. Uh, watch the other video on how well they caramelize. Uh, really, that's why people buy them. That's why I got it. Uh, that's what I use it for primarily, but once you've got it, you know, I discovered, hmm, you know, thought uh, I have a video on a mini mixer, a lot less expensive, uh, makes batches about half the size. Uh, clearly these machines are 220 volts and uh, weigh several hundred pounds. You're not going to take them to fairs and farmer markets and things like that very easily, though you could with a trailer, uh, but they're not highly portable. They're designed to pretty much be put into a store or a, a factory into some sort of a fixed commercial setting. Um, so while you could take it around with you, you're probably not going to. Uh, so that's where the mini mixer comes into place. There is a video on that as well. But if you're going to put this into a, a shop location, you're going to use it somewhere, and you want to offer savory corn, uh, uh, obviously it's a, it's a twofer. Two, uh, two purposes out of one machine. Uh, and I keep referencing savory corn, but I should also say you can just make regular buttered and salted popcorn with it too. Um, all of the popcorn that I make is with the RoboPop machines, which I'll be making videos on, and those are just air poppers. So they don't use oil in the popping process, and they come out, uh, the machines I use come out dry, so they need to be buttered and salted as well. And uh, so if you're doing air popping, uh, not just making savory mixes with this method, but also applying butter and salt flavorings, uh, which you wouldn't consider uh, savory, you just consider that regular butter or ready to eat or movie theater flavored. Um, so savory and ready to eat flavors can all be done with uh, either the Robo Sugar 10 or 20. Uh, if I can think of any other tips, I'll uh, add them to the comments. If you have questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, stop back for more videos extending the line of fun foods beyond just the original cotton candies and now into the caramelized and savory popcorns. I uh, hope to see you in a future video. And again, questions, comments into the section below. 
feel free to visit floatingcottoncandy.com or uh, caramelpopcornequipment.com and thank you for your time.